Joining me now from our studio are actors Woody Harrelson and Ben Foster and director Oren Muberman. They're in Washington this week for a screening of their new film, The Messenger, which opens the 11th of November. It explores the torment of soldiers who must tell family members that a loved one has died in combat. Woody, I want to start with you. You said this is the movie you're the proudest of. Why is that? Well, because I think it's not only a great movie and, uh, you know, showcases uh, Ben in one of the finest performances I've seen on film, as well as uh, an incredible new director who's phenomenal. I also think it's an important movie. It's a powerful movie. It leaves people at the end of it thinking about uh, the consequences of going to war. And uh, although it's not really, it doesn't really have a political objective, the film, it, it uh, you know, at least it shows that, and it, it so it, people, you know, a lot of people have generated some dialogue about it. You know, or I want to ask you. We know what the, the movie is about, the, but but tell me about the sort of the emotional center of this movie. Uh, what's at the heart of it? At the heart of it uh, are the families and the people who live, as what he said, with the consequences of war. And we we wanted to shine a light on them and, and bring them into the conversation, especially now. When we're talking about Afghanistan, the escalation, the more uh, dead in one month since we started the conflict. And so we, we just basically wanted to do our uh, little thing, bringing uh, the families, the soldiers who are returning. They're not, for some reason, entering the, the, the conversation, the strategic conversation about the war. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember there are people who are living with the consequences of it. And uh, we have only two million people in uniform in this country, and they've become a subculture. They've been marginalized, and I think they feel isolated. and. Uh, not part of the conversation, so we just wanted to do our, our little bit. Ben, tell me what it's like preparing for a role like this. How do you do that? Well, we all, uh, we took a, a field trip uh, to Walter Reed and spent time uh, in the amputee ward, and that was, uh, that was very sobering, and, and as we've been discussing, anybody who lives in D.C. who hasn't been to Walter Reed should, should go there and uh, thank our soldiers and just uh, see up close the, the results of war rather than talk about it in a very cold way, statistics, numbers, see it on a human level, what's happening to our country. Right. Is there, is there anything about the grieving process for those who are left behind, though, that you discovered in this in terms of the, the families who are alive, who've lost a loved one, about how they react to this? You want to take that? Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, our film concentrates on casualty notification, so we actually see the moment yeah. uh, the news gets to the door, and obviously, it's it's a traumatic moment, and, and it runs the gamut. There are all kinds of reactions, just like uh, all of us uh, would react to a any news of, of losing a loved one. Uh, there is a process in the army. Obviously, after the no casualty notification officers leave, a casualty assistance officer comes into the family, starts helping out, and making sure that they get all the benefits and all the things that uh, come their way, um, having lost a, a soldier. Then it's wide open. Then you know it's it's really uh, a, new, a beginning of a new life. Uh, it's it's the thing they dread the most. Obviously, the knock on the door and. Um, they have to deal with it and navigate a, a huge bureaucracy and, and sort of get back to life. And our film, it, in a small way, is about that. It's about how do you get back to life after having suffered uh, the pain um, and the consequences of war. And our, our answer is, is, is on a very basic level. It's, a, it's about love and friendship and humor and, and finding hope and, and optimism and, and, you know, and being thankful for being alive. Woody, the, the president went to Dover Air Force Base this week to um, be a part of and witness the ceremony of remains returning uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, other than telling the president to go to see this movie on the uh, 13th of November, what would you what would you tell him about based on your experience now with this film? <laughs> well, I don't think it's up to me to tell the president anything, but I do. I think it's important that he's weighing the escalation so heavily. He's obviously not. Uh, casual with his uh, decision and uh, I, I'd love to see them de-escalate and get out of Vietnam or, uh, you know or rather <laughs> well there's a lot of parallels but uh, to get out of Iraq and Afghanistan because I really don't think we have any justification for being there but uh, the fact that he's that he cares about it enough to do something unprecedented like uh, be there in Dover is huge. Can I yeah. add to that something? Sure. Uh, I really respect the president for doing it. We all do. And I think it's, it's a really great first step. Um, what he did in Dover, um, as, as powerful as it is, is ceremonial. It's, uh, you see the coffins, you see the flags. It's very respectful and it's very powerful. You know, if we don't start seeing the images of the guys 
more than 35,000 um, wounded over there who have lifelong injuries. Uh, you know, if I, I don't get to talk to the president, a few of us do, but if I was to say to him something was, you know, let's, and, and say to you guys also, let's start getting the cameras on the family. Let's start getting the cameras of those who want to talk, and the guys who are coming back. Let's listen to them, and let's start getting that story out, because that's a buried part of the conversation, and it shouldn't be that way. Ben, you mentioned going to Walter Reed. What, what were the spirits of the soldiers there like? I mean, what was that, you know, the ones who've lived, but who've got to de deal with the injuries and so forth? The positive, uh, but that's also uh, the soldier's way. Yeah. Uh, they've been trained to be soldiers, and just because they've come home missing pieces doesn't mean that they don't have that same kind of integrity. Uh, politically speaking, they don't necessarily agree or disagree, it depends on who you talk to, but they'd much rather, there's a sense of guilt of not being able to be out there and protecting their, their brothers. Mm -hmm. The, and, there's and an embarrassment. Almost without exception, they want to go back. They, they would like to go back uh, into combat because they want to be with their, their friends and they, they think what they're doing is important, you know. It's amazing. Amazing. Or in fi final question to you is, what's the reaction been from the military to the film? It's been very strong. The, the movie was actually fully supported by the military. They gave us technical advice. They gave us a technical advisor by the name of Paul Seiner, who was a godsend, who was really helping us every day. Um, so far, we've had a lot of soldiers watch it, different generations. Vietnam guys react very strongly to it. They've embraced the movie completely. Guys who are serving now, it's hard for them to watch it, but they, they, they're very grateful for us uh, uh, doing it. Were you going to add something to that? Well, I just wanted to say one last thing because it sounds like it's a bit of a downer, but it's a, this is a very up movie. At the end of it, you feel hopeful and uplifted, so I don't want people to be afraid of going to the theater because right. they're going to be depressed for two hours. And we explain why that is, how where that comes from, where the uplift uh, comes well, from. Well, I mean, you, you go through something so intensely emotional when you go through what's going on with these, you know, grieving families, but uh, the, it's, it's a really a love story, you know, both his he falls in love with uh, this uh, widow of one of the people he notifies and uh, as well as it's it's us coming to love each other and we have kind of a, a lot to get through just in terms of <clears throat> you know screening people out and being very stoic both of us uh, our characters and so you know that's why it's uplifting because I mean what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally agree. It's about you know getting back to life and finding friendship and love and the powerful things that we all need, no matter where we are. And the film goes through the path of grief and uplift that exactly. the families go yeah. through. And and you know, comic relief because it's necessary in life. And these guys use humor to get through some terrible situations. So so do we. All right, that's great. Thanks, gentlemen. The movie is The Messenger. Opens on the 13th in Washington first. And New York. And New York. Great. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you for having us.